why do they exhibit so much vengeance and hatred towards the opposition? These individuals that I've mentioned are not the only individuals who have been subjected to extrajudicial punishment by incarceration without trial or bond. You have the example of uh, uh, Honorable Mumbipiri. Honorable Mumbipiri, who was given a frivolous charge of murder and spent almost one year in custody for no good reason. You have the example of uh, Dr. Christopher Zumani Zimba, who was given together with three others, Port Fagwai and another individual, who were given frivolous charges of terrorism and kept in custody for more than six months for no good reason. So the question which you, the Zambian people, must be asking your government is why do they have a very high appetite for extrajudicial punishment? Why do they have a high appetite to incarcerate individuals and disrespect the constitution of Zambia? Why? Where is their hatred coming from? I'll explain. I'll answer myself. The reason why the UPND government has got so much hatred and they have a high appetite to harass and incarcerate the opposition is because they have failed. They have failed to run the affairs of this country. They have failed to deliver on their promises. They have failed to improve the standard of living of the people. And they know that the people will begin to ask questions. They know that the people will begin to mobilize to remove them in 2026. So what do they do? They conceive plans to use the Zander Police Service to harass the opposition so that the Zandan people cannot be given alternative solutions, alternative leadership from the opposition. That is the reason why the UPND are harassing the opposition. Let me open my wallet a bit. He's not dishing out money. <laughs> this is 100 kwacha, 250s. In 2021, this 100 kwacha used to buy 5 liters of petrol and change. Today, this 100 kwacha is only able to buy 2 liters of petrol. And yet, we have a president who claims that he has delivered on the aspirations of the Zambian people. At Indarama, I got to come to my president. It shouldn't go back. Uh, Thank you. So that is where the problem is. We have a government which has failed and is desperate to harass the opposition so that the people don't hear alternative voices. We have the case, allow me to briefly go into the case of Honorable J.J. Banda. We have a situation, countrymen and women, whereby the police and the government is arguing that Honorable J.J. Banda did not name the individuals who were involved in his abduction. State Council Sakura Skota, who is next to me here, made it clear that his client, J.J. Banda, mentioned the individuals who were involved in that abduction. And he listed three individuals, two state house officials and one UPND official. Honorable J.J. Banda indicated that Mr. Hamasaka, Kaysen Hamasaka, who is the communications chief at State House, is the one who was involved, according to his lawyer. Further, Honorable J.J. Banda is said to have indicated that Mr. Mr. Levi Mwanza, Levi, Levi Ngoma, who is the political advisor to President Hakainde Ichirema, was also involved, according to his lawyer. His lawyer tells us 
that Honorable J.J. Banda also indicated that Mr. Trevor Mwinde, the Deputy Youth Chairman of UPND, was also involved in that abduction. And yet the government is telling us that Honorable J.J. Banda did not reveal the people who were involved in his abduction. To make it simple, countrymen and women, let the Zambian people hear from J.J. Banda himself who abducted him. If J.J. Banda addresses the nation and narrates the ordeal from Ibex Hill, how he left his vehicle, to how he found himself in Kafue, then the Zambian people will be able to judge for themselves. So the question is, why are the police keeping J.J. Banda away from the people, away from the media, away from his family, so that he can tell his story? If the story by Honorable J.J. Banda, which he will share with the public, is inconsistent or does not sound true, you, the Zambian people, will judge for yourselves. We don't need Jack Mwimbu to explain to us what J.J. Banda said, as if J.J. Banda is dead. J.J. Banda is alive. J.J. Banda can speak for himself. The Zambian people have ears. The Zambian people have a mind. They can analyze what J.J. Banda will tell them, whether it sounds true or whether it is a lie. So why are the police keeping J.J. Banda away from the public so that he can tell his story, so that the people can judge whether his story is true or it is a lie? Why? We have a situation where, as we speak right now, the police have charged J.J. Banda with attempted murder for an offense which allegedly occurred in 2016. The question is, for a person who is just from being abducted, couldn't the police wait until he recuperates at home, and then if they want to charge him with anything, they can then charge him? Why are they charging him with an offense that took part, took place more than seven years ago now, and keeping him away from being heard by the public? Why? Countrymen and women, it shows that the police have something to hide. It shows that the government has something to hide. It shows that, most likely, in my view, the story that JJ gave to state council here is true, in my view, because the police and the state are making attempts to cover up their footsteps in terms of this abduction. And his arrest by uh, the police for the alleged attempted murder is a case of diversion. I submit, countrymen and women. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, you've gotten a very, very important and powerful statement from President uh, Tembo. Um, he did use some words which uh, perhaps I would like to expand on. He did say that uh, there's been extrajudicial punishment on the various people who have been uh, locked up. I think it's important that I break down what extrajudicial means. Extrajudicial means outside of the law, that these detentions and punishments are not as a result of the law saying that these people uh, should be either detained or denied bail, but it is somebody doing it out of their own volition. In other words, these claims that are being made that they follow the rule of law are merely out there for public relations purposes. Because if you follow the rule of law, you will not do anything which is extrajudicial. Um, and I wish to confirm, as President Tembo was saying, that indeed, Honorable J.J. Banda did name his abductors. He did not remain quiet, as Minister Lufuma claimed. And one has to wonder why the minister had to hold a press conference where clearly he was trying to hide what J.J. Banda said. It raises questions, and all of you must ask yourselves, why is this so? Uh, my colleague, President Tembo, lastly also said that uh, uh, 
JJ is being kept from the public. It is not only from the public, but sadly, he's being kept even away from his lawyers. Again, a clear indication that this government does not follow the rule of law.